Netflix has been ramping up its crime shows in the last few years, especially with the return of Unsolved Mysteries. Recently, it released a new show called Crime Scene on February 11, 2021. The first season is a four-part series that covers the disappearance of Elisa Lam at the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. The series did a great job covering the case from start to end, examining every detail and entertaining every theory. Ultimately, using an Occam's Razor approach, eyewitness accounts, and forensic findings, the show gives a heavily supported conclusion of what exactly happened to Lam the night she disappeared. We know the details of how Elisa Lam got into the tank and her condition after she was discovered. However, we don't know how long she was alive in the tank for. Could she have been alive for several hours or even days? Her autopsy report lists the cause of death as drowning. Yet, the forensic pathologist who did the autopsy noted there was no water in her lungs, or really any sign of drowning. So how did Elisa Lam really die? What if we look at other things besides her autopsy? One variable that appears to be overlooked was the temperature outside the night she died. The conditions in Los Angeles during February, a winter month, has a major role to play, specifically in hypothermia. At first, you may think it's grasping at straws, but upon closer examination, it's truly not, and I'll explain why. Winter in Los Angeles is not brutally cold like winters in North Dakota or Minnesota. They're fairly mild with high 60s and low 70s in the day and mid to low 50s at night. These are not conditions for frostbite, but if you were in water outside, hypothermia is a reality. Hypothermia, hypo meaning under, and thermia meaning heat, is excessive heat loss from the body. Conditions are somewhat specific and require two factors. The victim must be wet, usually in a body of water, or in the rain, and the temperature must be cool or cold. These are crucial conditions because the body needs to have heat removed from it at a constant rate, and water does this extremely well. You can be wet in 85 degree weather or dry in 60 degree weather and be fine. However, if you're soaking wet in 60 degree weather, you're getting hypothermia. If we look at weather records on the night that Elisa Lamb disappeared, we see the temperature was 54 degrees Fahrenheit. This is known because the elevator footage that recorded her was from February 1st. It's known to be nighttime for a couple of reasons. First off, Lamb was scheduled to check out on February 1st. However, she had no baggage with her, so she was not on her way to the lobby. This would indicate it was actually the early morning of February 1st, between roughly 12 and 6 a.m. No other guest reported seeing her on the 1st because it was the early morning and most were asleep. Finally, Elisa Lamb was in a hallucinating and paranoid state, so it would make sense that she would not be sleeping, but instead wandering the hotel. Just ask any person with paranoia. She entered the elevator from the 14th floor because perhaps she couldn't sleep, so she decided to get a view from the top floor. Paranoia and hallucinations drove her to the roof, where she made her way to the water tank and lowered herself in. Perhaps she thought it was empty, but who really knows? Once in the 54 degree water, it began to act as a heat sink, pulling away her body heat until there was none left. Hypothermia progresses in three stages, mild, moderate, and severe, each with a lower body temperature than the last and increasingly dangerous effects on the body. Within a few minutes of being in the water, Lamb would have experienced mild hypothermia. Her body temperature would have dropped to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit and would have tried to mitigate the heat loss by increasing muscle contractions. This includes rapid breathing, increased heart rate, constriction of blood vessels, and violent shivering in skeletal muscle. Her neurological signs would have remained unaffected. Within 15 to 20 minutes, her body temperature would have dropped to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, moderate hypothermia sets in. The water is such a powerful heat sink that body heat is lost faster than it's produced. Muscles begin to lose their contractility and flexibility due to a colder body temperature and reduced circulation. As a result, breathing and shivering begin to slow down as well. The heart undergoes arrhythmia or abnormal beating and blood begins to clot in small quantities. With less circulation, less oxygen reaches the brain causing neurological deficits such as delirium, confusion, and fatigue. In the final stage of hypothermia, the body temperature drops to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Coughing and gag reflexes are non-existent. Muscles have become rigid, heart rate starts to drop, and the skin turns blue due to low circulation. Lack of oxygen to the brain exacerbates mental fatigue, delusions, and confusion. At this stage, many people undergo paradoxical undressing, where despite their fatally low body temperature, they undress themselves. It's believed due to confused signaling, they perceive they are uncomfortably warm and remove their clothes to cool down. Eventually, the heart stops beating, breathing ceases, and the victim perishes. 
The amount of time Elisa Lam was alive is related to the temperature of the water she was in. Passengers on the Titanic who waited in 28 degree water died of hypothermia within 15 to 30 minutes. People have been known to die of hypothermia in 50 degree water in as little as one hour. Given that she had no insulated clothing and at one point became nude would have made one to two hours very likely. Her autopsy ruled the cause of death as drowning. However, it's very likely she died of hypothermia instead. Again, the pathologist found little to no water in her lungs. If someone drowns, it's because they're underwater and cannot breathe. At some point, water would fill the lungs. However, if you're in, say, neck deep water that is 50 degrees and you can't get out of it, you're going to die of hypothermia. This was a very high profile case and would be met with close scrutiny if it wasn't fitting optically. Drowning is understood more readily by the public than hypothermia, and optically, it's accepted. After all, she was trapped in a tank of water. What else would you expect? All in all, the cause of death being drowning instead of hypothermia does not change the facts or outcome of the case. Elisa Lam still had a paranoid and hallucinating episode, causing her to act irrationally and enter a water tank, resulting in her being trapped and subsequently dying.